the buff and the beautiful have come out to play. New York City is celebrating its Gay Pride Week and more than 7,000 men are swaying and sweating to the beat. Some conservative Christians think this is a sea of sin. They reject the theory that people are born gay, believing instead that homosexuality is unnatural, preventable and curable. I believe that men and women fit together. This and this, it works. <laughs> These two things and these two things, they just don't fit. So natural law shows us that men and women work and fit together naturally and beautifully. And two men and two women, it's, it's just incomplete. Hey, welcome. Hey. Good to see you. Thank you. Come on in. Richard Cohen is one of America's leading conversion therapists. Yeah, Exercise. That. Inside his small suburban office, a transformation is underway. So I've asked you to do the inner child workbook in order to get in touch with that little boy inside that you used to be. And that's him Lee Brundage is gay, but is having his sexuality reoriented. This is to help you externalize, express feelings that are trapped in your body to make you a more powerful man. There are more than 100 conversion clinics in the United States. Richard Cohen uses a variety of techniques to knock the homosexuality out of his clients. Lee! Lee! Why don't you take care of things timely? Like that. Smashing a tennis racket apparently helps people dredge up repressed memories from as far back as the womb. Hey! Good. Hey! Why did you do that? The therapist says he's helped hundreds of clients overcome their homosexuality, and Lee Brundage says he's one of them. I'm confident I found it, man, and I'm at peace. I'm happy, I'm enjoying life, successful. Heavenly Father, thank you for this. Richard Cohen believes anyone can be straightened out if they try hard enough. His evidence? Himself. He was once gay, but says he's now happily heterosexual, married with children. Cohen calls himself ex-gay. Can you imagine a thousand million pound weight being lifted off of one's shoulders and a, and a gnawing at my gut that was there my whole life, felt like my whole life, craving a guy, was gone. What are the English? It was like a bird getting out of a cage. It was like a prisoner being released. Did you, oh, did you email that now I'm exclusively heterosexual. I'm not interested in guys. I feel my guyness. I'm attracted to my wife. I'm forgiven. You were forsaken. Reorientation therapy isn't just the realm of independent counselors. We travel west to Colorado Springs. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me. This is the headquarters of Focus on the Family, the country's most powerful Christian lobby group. It's so big it has its own postcode and an annual operating budget of $200 million. Tell me about these horrible uh, children's books that we really need to be aware of. Tens of millions of Americans listen to its top radio program each week, and it wields enormous political influence. And yet here we have something that could actually be very destructive to them, both emotionally and spiritually. I never want another 16-year-old boy that struggles with same-sex attractions to not know that walking away from homosexuality is possible for him. And that's my life call and that's what I'm committed to. Mike Haley runs Focus on the Family's Homosexuality Division. He's ex-gay himself. Are you still attracted to men in any way then or are you completely changed? I might see a man at the gym that has big muscular masculine legs. Well, 20 years ago, I would have wanted to sleep with that man. Now what I do is I look at that man with envy. I wish I had his legs. I no longer sexualize that unmet need in my own life. Miami, Vice City. This is the latest stop for Mike Haley's ex-gay roadshow. The conversion conference is taking around the country. So for the very first time at the age of 16, I walked into a gay bar. And let me tell you, I thought I had come home. These the congregation's told 30% of gays who try to change fail. 
30% have partial success, and 30% are completely reoriented. And like I said, I began to notice things that I had never noticed about women before. I guess the easiest way to help you to understand this is you think puberty's hard once, you gotta try it twice. 700 people have turned up, the curious, the concerned and the confused. For instance, if you have a daughter that struggles with homosexuality, we've put a packet together that talks about female homosexuality. We have a male packet, we have a packet for pastors, we have a packet for youth pastors, and these come at a discount if you end up buying the whole set. And so I just wanted to make sure you're aware of those over in the bookstore. The reorientation business is big business. At the back of the church, a shop is selling books, videos and audio tapes with titles like, You Don't Have to Be Gay. One of the myths that we really want to clear up, especially from those that are from the gay community, is that, you know, this is not just something that you pray away or that you read your Bible enough and homosexuality poof takes care of itself. Let's show Paul Ridge Presbyterian Church what real religion looks like. Many homosexuals believe the ex-gay movement is about hate, not love. Yes, right. Outside the church, a small group of protesters is condemning the conference, saying change is neither possible nor necessary. God loves unconditionally. It's a fraud. They're misleading people for political gain and to make money. They're hurting people, they're destroying families, and it's really just a high-financed campaign of misinformation. It's an absolute tragedy for everybody involved. Wayne Besson is conversion therapy's fiercest critic. He describes reorientation techniques as dangerous and laughable. They tell you to become more masculine as a guy by drinking Gatorade, the sports drink, and calling your friends a dude. And they even tell you to wear a rubber band on your wrist, and when you see somebody you're attracted to, you snap it and it's supposed to snap you back into reality. Besson was exposed to conversion therapy soon after he told his parents he was gay. Whenever you want to relax, whenever you need to relax, just take a deep breath. So this they gave him a CD that claimed to cure homosexuality by self-hypnosis. It's still being sold. Completely humiliating for an 18-year-old. You have permission to change. You are changing. You are changing now. You enjoy a woman's body in the nude. Having sex with a woman is wonderful for you. You are truly happy with your new sexuality. You enjoy having sex with women. Your past sexuality is a closed issue. It is over. It has served its purpose. The ex-gays say they are about compassion, but they're really not. They say they're about conversion, but it's really about coercion. They say they're about persuasion, but it's really persecution. But there are people who say they were gay and now say they are straight. Does it work for at least a small group of committed people? Reparative therapy works for nobody. What it does is it shames people and creates a stigma, so they want to say they've changed. <laughs> American gays are proud of their sexuality, proud to strut their stuff on the streets. For others, though, it's a torment. Mel White was once a trusted advisor to the religious rights leadership. Christian himself, he married and had children, but was suppressing a secret. He was gay. He spent decades desperately trying to change his sexuality, even enduring exorcisms and electroshock treatment. They had me bring pictures of men, including myself, that I found attractive, and then they put in pictures of women and mixed them up. And they gave me the control so they wouldn't see themselves as abusers. And they said, when you see an attractive man, you turn up the power. And then we'll change it, and then when you see attractive women, we'll turn down the power. It was just that simplistic. So it's, it's almost Pavlovian, is it? That it's you, totally, you see that's, a man, it's behavioral. Zap. Yeah, see a man, zap. 
none of it worked. Eventually, Reverend White embraced his homosexuality, reconciling it with his Christianity. He now lives with another man and calls it a happy ending, but it only came after decades of confusion, shame and suffering. At one point, he slashed his wrists in front of his wife. I was bleeding and she was crying and, and we went to the hospital and after that she said, you know, you've been a good husband and a good father, but there's no reason for you to struggle like this. This isn't right. I love gay people. I just didn't want you to be one and you are one. So let's, 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 let's separate. God loves him and it breaks God's heart to see him so fouled up on this issue and other issues. I mean, you know, the bumper sticker, Jesus is coming again and boy is he pissed. <laughs> that bumper sticker applies here. I mean, it's breaking Jesus' heart. Mel White's experiences have turned him into a vocal critic of the conversion ministries and a campaigner for gay rights. He's training young people in the art of peaceful protest, warning them what they could face if they confront the religious right. Gays are killing themselves as much as being killed. And much of that is because they fail at the ex-gay movement. They feel like such a failure when God doesn't change them, then they feel like, okay, I'm a failure and I should die. We have all kinds of people that I have buried who have left suicide notes that said, I didn't know how else to settle this. I couldn't make it right with God and I can't make it right with myself. And so I accuse the ex-gay movement of being a c complicit with murder all over this country and now around the world. The ex-gay movement now has a new focus, a new target, young people. Memphis, Tennessee is home of the blues and the oldest reorientation ministry. It's called Love in Action and it offers live-in therapy. We could have anywhere from 15 to 20 people here at a time. In the we were shown around the campus but forbidden from filming the clients. A two-week course here costs two and a half thousand dollars. A six-week program is six thousand dollars. So how does something like this actually help change someone's sexuality? when you look at, for example, the spider web, when you're picking up someone and putting them through the spider web, it can bring up insecurities. Are they going to hold me? Are they going to drop me? What's going to happen? It all John Smith is Love and Action's director. He's been on a sexual roller coaster. He married a woman, had a gay affair, got divorced, lived as a homosexual, became a Christian, changed his sexuality, and is now married again. It's costly to leave homosexuality. It's difficult. Um, it's, it's painful at times to deal with this stuff inside honestly. Um, but I'd much rather put my energy in this direction. And it, and it has very much paid off. Um, I, I'm, I've never regretted leaving homosexuality. Not for one moment have I ever regretted it. At Love in Action, the therapy is intense, the rules incredibly strict. Clients must report all their fantasies to counsellors. For the first few days of the program, the clients aren't allowed to speak, make eye contact or even gesture to anybody. Basically at their will, it's very cultish, it's very um, like a cult. It's just like being incarcerated, it's being trapped. It's a constant barrage of um, this is wrong, this is not right, something is wrong with you. We need to fix you, um, and then that whole their whole therapy is based on that conditioning of shame, and that's basically what every day is centered around. Lance Carroll spent two months at Love in Action. He's still gay, despite being subjected to the extraordinary restrictions listed in Love in Action's rule book. Men must remove all facial hair seven days weekly, and sideburns must not fall below the top of the ear. Women must must shave legs and underarms at least twice weekly. Yeah. Uh, the clients may not wear Abercrombie & Fitch or Calvin Klein clothing brand, undergarments or accessories. No television viewing, going to movies or reading slash watching slash listening to secular media of any kind. So even Beethoven, Bach and those types of things aren't allowed because they're not expressly Christian. It's okay to be gay! What makes Love in Action really controversial is the focus on children. 
People as young as 15 are brought here, some against their will. Why aren't kids allowed to journal? Why aren't kids allowed to communicate with anyone or make eye contact? Lance Carroll was just 18 when his mother and father forced him into conversion therapy. He's no longer living with his parents. His mother in particular can't handle having a gay son. Definitely supportive for myself. My mom went crazy and she was beating me and hitting me around and yelling hateful things like queer and faggot, pussy, all these terrible things. And she basically beat me into a corner in my room while I was trying to get my last few possessions. And my dad had to physically pull her off of me out of the room so I could get out the door. And basically I had to run to my car and lock myself in it because she was there right behind me pounding on the door to get in. We believe as Christians that Christian parents have not only the right, but they have the obligation to raise their children in the way that they feel is appropriate, right, morally, ethically, and spiritually. Gay identity has always been complex and controversial. The cowboy is America's epitome of masculinity, and they breed them particularly tough down in Texas. Bulls and Broncos say these are the longest seconds on earth. And yet all of these men are homosexual, gay cowboys. Tim Kernan and Rich Parker have been together for three years. I'm not here to make a statement to anybody. I'm here because it's what I like to do and who I am. That's the only reason I'm here. The medical mainstream once classed homosexuals as mentally ill. These days, though, all the major psychiatric and psychological associations reject the idea that homosexuality is a disorder, and some even believe conversion therapy is downright dangerous. Well, first, I'm not sick, so uh, there's nothing to cure. I don't feel sick. I don't. I live a good life. I'm good. I'm nice to people. I take care of my family. I take care of my mother. I. I mean. I don't see what's wrong with anything. To say that it's a choice is like, it, it isn't a choice. Because if, if I had a choice... Yeah, who'd pick I, this? Who would pick this? Why would you want AIDS and, you know, working with an environment where there's a lot of AIDS? Why would you want to be discriminated against? Yeah. If I could choose, I'd, I'd be living in a house with a wife and two kids and a white picket fence. Homosexuality is a hot political issue. The ex-gay movement is getting bigger, more powerful, and more ambitious. The latest battlefield isn't the church or the dance club, it's the classroom. The ex-gay groups are lobbying, even suing, to get their message that change is possible into schools, and they're succeeding. Here in Maryland, the federal court has ordered a school district to rewrite its sex education curriculum to include different perspectives on homosexuality. Ha! Good. Ha! Good. Richard Cohen is one of the leaders of the new campaign and he wants his message heard around the world. Have a name! Everywhere homosexuality is taught, we want to teach healing out of unwanted homosexuality or same-sex attraction. That's our goal. Okay, good. Now stop. You're doing great. Here, in Australia, in England, in Europe, all over the world, we want kids to know you can choose to live a gay life or you can choose to change and come out straight. The ex-gay ministries offer promises they can't deliver and, and offer uh, disasters they never promised. They destroy families and it's also wrong for them to say they're just trying to help people when what they're really trying to do is pass anti-gay laws to discriminate. And that's my problem with them. Even as the debate turns political, its implications are still intensely personal. Tim Kernan and Rich Parker, the gay cowboys, have finished at the rodeo in a home on the range, teaching a novice how to lasso a calf. Well, you hit whoa. it. You hit it. More than hit it. Did you catch it? Whoa, 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 whoa. You're big time. You're big time now. <laughs> I don't want any right somebody else doesn't have. I don't want to be treated differently than anybody else. I just want to be accepted. I want to. Be, I am who I am, and I want to be accepted. I want to be able to go to a rodeo and not being second-guessed or... I want to be able to walk into a restaurant and sit across from him and not have somebody ask me if he's my brother. Here we go. 
The ex-gay debate is becoming a key battleground in the culture wars, a clash between biology and morality. It's not just a fight for hearts and minds, but for sexuality and souls as well.